The Colonial Pipeline slowly resuming operations after last week's cyber attack, with oil prices falling more than 2% early this morning. The shutdown of the largest refined products pipeline in the country that stretches over 5,000 miles from Texas to New Jersey resulted in fuel shortages and panic buying at gas stations across the southeastern part of the country. Here to discuss the pipeline attack and the threat of further cyber attacks on our nation's infrastructure is ABC News contributor and former Assistant Secretary for Homeland Security, Elizabeth Newman. Elizabeth, welcome and thank you for being with us. And I'm going to be fully honest here. Yesterday, I was even asking, wait, how does this work? We're hearing about this ransomware. We're hearing about this organization uh, potentially out of Russia. And, and it's confusing to a lot of people, present party included, as to how it's actually happening. Hey, Amy, that is a great question. Um, ransomware is, is kind of new, um, but the name kind of tells you what, what this is all about. It's financial extortion. So even if you had good cyber hygiene and you had the, the backups to be able to restore your data, which is one of the recommendations, have that backup so you don't have to pay the ransom, the, the threat to release data that might need to be protected for some reason, that is an added incentive to the corporation, to the victim, to have to pay that ransom. So this is a financial cyber crime. Uh, it is mostly done for money. It is growing and it is increasingly becoming a national security and public safety threat. What really is the level of sophistication, uh, the level of resources that a group like Darkside is this cyber crime, this gang, the name here, what level of sophistication do you have to have and resources do you have to have to pull off something like this? Dark side is sophisticated. Um, they uh, are what we would consider a persistent threat actor. They're going to try multiple routes. They're going to uh, target multiple different companies and see which one is the weakest. I think there's a lot more that we can be doing with our critical infrastructure. Um, critical infrastructure tends to be owned by uh, either state or local governments or by the private sector. But those utilities, things like pipelines and water and uh, uh, our transportation systems, you know, th we, the, the taxpayer, pay for a lot of those. So we tend to want uh, the budgets to be as small as possible so our taxes are as small as possible. That doesn't bode well for security. We really do need to take a hard look at building resilience into our infrastructure and making sure our infrastructure has strong cybersecurity so that we don't end up with situations like this where our, literally our lives are disrupted and, and worse, worse could happen um, if we don't take uh, take this as the warning sign that it is. Yeah, with everything you just said and the agenda that we believe to be the case for Dark Side, and I'm sure there are plenty of other organizations out there trying to do the very same thing, and you're talking about things like gas, water, electricity, things that we just assume are going to be there that would be more than disruptive. Uh, it would be catastrophic, frankly, if we were to lose uh, control over those things. So how vulnerable are we? Can you really give us a basic sense of just as a nation with our private industry and through our government properties, how vulnerable are we? You know, sadly, we are pretty vulnerable. Um, the conversation around critical infrastructure has been ongoing for uh, I think we're probably into our third decade at this point, uh, really spun up post 9-11, this idea of we need to physically protect. And uh, in the late aughts, um, we started focusing more and more on the cyber aspect of protecting our critical infrastructure because more of these systems are being digitized. Things that used to be manually operated are now being operated by computers. And that, of course, creates vulnerability. We saw the first example in the real world of uh, a cyber attack being able to affect physically critical infrastructure in 2015 uh, in Ukraine. Um, they took out uh, power for about 230,000 people for a couple of hours, but it was really the first known instance of a cyber attack affecting critical infrastructure. And, and ever since then, it, it had been warned that it could happen, but once that did happen, once that barrier was broken, uh, cyber, cyber experts have been warning like th this this will be happening. It's just a matter of when the ransomware piece of this is more criminal and as opposed to perhaps a nation state attacking and trying to actually take out uh, our infrastructure. So in some ways, if, if we were going to have something like this happen, I'd rather see it as a cyber crime as opposed to a hostile nation state attack, uh, because if a nation state were to have attacked this intentionally, the disruption would probably be much more severe because they do have quite significant capabilities and we are pretty vulnerable. We have a lot of work to do. ABC News contributor and former Assistant Secretary for Homeland Security, Elizabeth Newman, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me.
Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.